When I came into the league, uh, the total salary for 12 ball players and three coaches, total salary for 15 people when I came into the NBA was $1.8 million. So you divide that up, and uh, when I left the league, I, I made the most money uh, that I made my last year, and that was uh, $350,000. And uh, that's, that's a lot of money. There's no question about that, but when you talk about taxes and family that needs money and all of that, uh, I left the league knowing that I would have to have a job doing something else. And I worked, as you mentioned, Wendy's, but I also worked for an insurance company, and I worked at Howard Johnson's in the, in the off season. I actually went back to law school for four summers, and you can't get a law degree in four summers, so don't try that. But uh, just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And the only reason I stayed with Wendy's was I figured I'd hire somebody to run it, and they could make money for me while I figured out what I was going to do in life after basketball. And uh, I got an offer from the Milwaukee Bucks to be an assistant general manager making $50,000 a year. But as attractive as that might have been at that time, I wanted to see what I could do myself. I, I wanted to see what I could, could, could grow. I didn't want to have somebody telling me I need to be at work at 8.30 and I couldn't get off until 5 o'clock. And, and so that's why I got involved with Wendy's. I figured food, people always need to eat, so we'll see what that, how that develops, how that goes. Uh, Hold on, let me just follow up. So yeah. how were you able to scale that Wendy's business to become the number one franchise owner in the world? Well, uh, we started off uh, like most companies at that time. If you're black and you're going to get involved, they're going to put you in the black area town. And so it was no different. We started in Milwaukee because I spent all those, those years there with uh, five stores in the, in the inner city of Milwaukee. And they were not very good restaurants, but I figured if we worked at it, you could turn things around. And I'll tell you, the, the average volume of those five restaurants was only $600,000 a year. And you're not making any money at that volume. Today, those restaurants, and my son runs them, so we still have a lot of them, but they, they do over $2 million in sales. And how do you do that? By getting involved with the people and letting the people know that you care about them. Now, how do you do that? Uh, back at that time in Milwaukee, if you got stopped for any traffic violation, they uh, took you to jail. It was a crazy law that I'm glad they've changed, but where was all of our people at? They were in jail. So we were bailing people out every day, and, and I could take you through other things that we did to help show people that we cared about them. And once they realized that we cared about them, then they cared about the business, and they cared about us, and we grew. And as we grew and added more stores, we were able to promote people from a general manager to a district manager to an area operations person. And after a while, we had a whole lot of people making over $100,000 a year. And, uh, and you would say, you know, how did that happen? And it was in, in what I would call the, a real American dream. You could come go to work if you had just natural common sense and you were willing to work hard, you could make a good living for yourself. And we had people that went on from there and became franchisees on their own. So turn around and it was a matter of helping people and then one day I looked up and we had 275 Wendy's restaurants and then I turned around and we had 125 Chili's restaurants and then we had 500 restaurants you know and 25,000 people working for us so